So what's up, everybody? Welcome to this very unusual episode of Jason Giralla Photography. Uh, the door just rang, and the FedEx guy just came, so I am trying out something very different than what I usually do. I'm going to do an unboxing, because I've got something that I think is pretty darn awesome. So the doorbell just rang, dropping off something that I am pretty excited about. Uh, this is a very unusual episode for me because I don't think I've ever done an unboxing before. I've been thinking about this for quite a while. As you probably know, this Sony A9 Mark II has been my everyday shooter for the past year. Uh, but lately I've been getting a lot, and I mean a lot, of video projects coming through the door. Uh, so much so that uh, I picked up uh, DJI Ronin uh, to help me out uh, producing better video. Uh, but one of the things that I've been really struggling with and uh, I've talked to a lot of people about is that the Sony's video autofocus uh, just isn't living up to its potential. I feel like the stills autofocus is absolutely incredible, uh, but the video autofocus, it just feels like it leaves a little bit of something to be desired. So with that being said, I spoke to some of my friends and decided to take a flyer on a brand new opportunity. So since this is like my very first unboxing video, I really don't know what the hell to do. Uh, it's pretty funny. I usually don't have a lack of things to talk about when I'm doing things for this channel. But uh, for this, I really am not too sure what people's kicks are about uh, seeing other people buy things. But anyway, uh, so this, like I said, is my Sony A9 Mark II. And I have very little to say that's bad about this camera. Um, it feels good in the hand, um, although it's kind of weird if you notice, like, if you hold it like this, which is how I always hold the camera, there's like a bump that could be a little bit better uh, for your pinky, so kind of have to spread your hands out, and that's not that comfortable. Of course, that's really made so that when you go vertical, you have a, a, a trigger for your finger there, but it is just a little annoyance that kind of, like, you're sitting on an edge when you're holding it sideways. Uh, and that's primarily because the body is so small that I can't quite fit my fingers on the on the camera. Another thing that I know is uh, not as good on this as it is on this, at least from what I've heard, is the image stabilization. Uh, they say that the uh, A9 and, and A7R4 are like four or five stops of stabilization and they're, and they're touting eight, or at least potentially eight with the R5. So it's a, a crazy thing. I know when I started this channel, I had uh, been shooting with an EOS R, and I know that that was a camera that was really not for me because it's really not a sports and wildlife camera. Uh, but uh, the R5 supposedly changes all that. Uh, so uh, let's see here. I got, good God. All right. So this is the thickest camera manual I have ever seen. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's two. I think it's one. Yeah, it's one whole book. This thing is humongous. Now, it's split into uh, English and French and Spanish. So there are, it is three times as thick as it needs to be. But goodness gracious, that is a thick instruction manual. Of course, got the warranty card and image.canon. This is another thing that I'm kind of excited about. Uh, supposedly, uh, you can set it up to where your, your photos automatically back up to image.canon and then download to Google Drive or whatever. I think that could be a really powerful thing, especially when you're shooting somewhere uh, where you may not have access to, to offload pictures. Um, what else we got here? Um, a USB, uh, um, USB-C, yeah, USB-C. Um, battery, very important, and battery charger. Uh, let's see what else here. All right, uh, and I got the kit, so I got the 24 to 105. Um, so normally I'm used to using the A92 with Sony's uh, 24 to 72.8, and I had a real hard time deciding if I was going to be okay with 24 to 105 f4 instead of 2.8. But the reality is, at least 99% of the time, when I'm shooting, I'm not shooting at 2.8 anyway. I'm shooting at f4. Uh, or higher because I'm shooting a family or, or something like that. And uh, to shoot a family in focus, you're not shooting at 2.8 anyway. So, uh, 
really, I don't know if, if I'm going to miss the 2.8. And I do really like having a little bit longer of a zoom because sometimes 70 is just not long enough. So having the 105 uh, is a nice option. Uh, something that I, I do remember about this uh, is uh, they are, they're pretty heavy, hefty lenses. Uh, I, I did have the 24 to 105 when I owned the EOS R uh, before. And so I did really like using it. Uh, I thought it was a, a really excellent lens. Um, so I'm sort of nice to be welcoming it back into the stable. Uh, and then here is the main event. Hello. Yeah, and see, again, I, I do wish that camera manufacturers, even Canon, would just make their cameras just a, just a hair bigger. I have fairly large hands, and... Um, I always feel like my finger is about to like fall off the edge. Uh, another thing that I'm really excited about having again is a fully articulating screen. Um, I didn't think it was a big deal when I used to shoot the EOS R because it was really the first camera I had that had a fully articulating screen. Um, but then going uh, from the R to the Sony A9 and then just having just a tilty flippy screen that the A9 has, I really missed, especially when I'm shooting down low or up high, uh, in uh, portrait orientation specifically, like you just can't see your composition when you're holding your camera up high or, or, or down low. Uh, so having the tilty flippy screen as opposed to just the tilt screen, um, I do think is a huge advantage uh, and something that uh, I do wish uh, was uh, you know, more, uh, more prevalent in the Sony world. I know that the A7S Mark III has it, uh, but I had been considering uh, upgrading to the A1, obviously, that's sort of the camera du jour for Sony. Um, I, I hear amazing things about it, uh, but you know, I'm a freak when it comes to packing. I like to make sure everything goes back in exactly the way it came out, so like, I just take my time when I'm putting things away. Um, and I'm actually a little concerned. Oh, nope, it did come. I was wondering where this was. I didn't see it, but they strangely wrapped it in a plastic baggie. Um, one of the weird things about switching to this camera is that I had to get a very expensive um, CF Express Type B card um, to enable that 20 frames per second. Uh, so I'm not sure if this camera is going to be able to keep up with my with my style uh, of shooting, if it's going to be able to do sports and wildlife the way I want to. I have probably watched every mainstream review on the market today, uh, and I am just... I'm not confident because enough people have said it's laggy and uh, blah, 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 this and that, that I'm a little bit scared. Uh, so this does the job 150% of the time. The battery life is amazing. The lenses are amazing. I really do love my Sony A9 Mark II. Um, <clears throat> it's a real struggle. This is, I have to say, uh, I have, if you've watched any of my videos, you know, I have gone through cameras like uh, nobody's business, but this is the first time that I'm actually really conflicted about upgrading. Uh, I just do not know if I'm getting a better camera here. Um, I feel like the answer is going to be yes, um, from what everybody says. And yeah, you can see, like, this is a peewee battery. Like, if you look, hold on, let me just look at the size of these Z batteries compared. I mean, these are just so chunky. There's just so there's more amp hours I know in the in the Z batteries, um, and from what I understand, and I always have two because I shoot with the grip. I did not buy the grip this time. That was something that was uh, different than normally when I buy a new camera. I buy a grip, uh, but the goal here is to be a little lighter weight, um, and that was something that was really really attractive about going with the 24 to 105 over the 24 to 70 is it's lighter, and the 70 to 200 that comes tomorrow. Uh, shh, don't tell anybody, uh, it's supposed to be, you know, the smallest and lightest there is. So that kind of is exciting as well. Oh, let's see. I doubt that there's going to be a battery charge. We'll see if there is. You know, it's one of those things where you wait all day to get your camera and the battery's not charged, which is not, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it just means now I have to wait longer before I can even play. Uh, anyway, so we shall see. Uh, if this is going to do the job I need it to do. Now, the other challenge <coughs> is batteries going on the charger right now. I'm going to step away. Oh, no, I'm not. Battery is going on the charger right now. I'm going to step away. 
The other challenge is that I have two bodies with Sony. I shoot with the A9 Mark II as my primary battery, uh, or primary camera. But then I also have the A, uh, A7R Mark II, which is my high resolution landscape, nightscape, etc., etc., etc. camera. And that is also a killer camera uh, that I think is, this, I should have paid a little more attention. But again, this is the first time I've done an unboxing, so I didn't really watch how I unpacked it. I was too busy talking. Uh, but it's one of the things that are in there 90% of the time, 90% of the way, I'll be, I'll be happy with it. All right. Well, it's charging, and uh, that is that. For now, that will do the job. It's back in the box. All the things I don't need are back in the box. And the things I do need are out with me. But you know, if you look at the if you look at the camera sizes side by side, once I take off the Sony grip, they really are very similar. I mean, I feel like the Canon's a little chunkier. Uh, which is interesting because really this is supposed to be, or at least I was told that this was the flagship. And, you know, that's that's something that actually has bothered me a little bit is that I was sold into buying a Sony A9 Mark II because that was supposedly the flagship, uh, the A9 series, uh, which obviously is no longer the case with the A1 coming out. And now I know cameras get upgraded and that's how it goes. But uh, it's just one of those things where I feel like the A9, has, A9 Mark II has basically been completely forgotten about. Uh, in the lexicon of cameras, we're not getting really the firmware updates that I feel like we could be getting. Um, and I spent a lot of money on my A9 Mark II. I feel like Sony has sort of let us down there. Uh, so this is a ProGrade 128 gigabyte CF Express Type B. I've never held one of these before. It certainly does feel tougher than an SD card. Let's make sure I get this in there the right way because I do not want to buy another one. That was easy. All right to get my other SD card uh, out of the closet. But um, and these are interesting that they're, the cameras are going away uh, from the SD card and going more and more into these high-end cards. I do think it's a good thing. Um, we, need, we need faster read-write speeds. And one of the very frustrating things with Sony, and anybody that shoots Sony will tell you that, is when you fill up your buffer or when you shoot a big burst, uh, Sony then locks you out of your memory. Uh, so you can't look at the pictures you've taken and uh, you can't really go into many of the menu systems. It's just, it's very frustrating. Uh, another thing that I'm really excited about, I didn't really talk about much is the, the LCD on the back of the Sony a nine. And, and this is actually for even the a one is really poor. Like it's, it's VGA crappy. And this is like more than twice the resolution. So, uh, I'm pretty excited about actually having a better clear uh, rear screen, but I am just going on and on and I've got another piece of equipment about to arrive. So all right, so look what else came in the mail. Got my green juice. <sighs> Little mean green. This is my first RFL lens for the system and probably the most important lens for, well, I wouldn't say the most important, one of the most important. They're all important, right? So never mind. I, I take that back. It's not the most important. It's just very awesome. This is the RF 100 to 500. Holy crap, it's small. Hopefully this will be a little easier to put back together once I... Take it out of the box, we shall see. Nice little padding, padded case. Yeah, this is a little bit, a little easier than the camera was to get out of the box. Instructions, because I don't know who needs instructions with the lens. Turn on, put on camera, and shoot. But I did instructions nonetheless. So this is the 100 to 500. A little stressed about this. Um, I don't know, uh, the Sony. Uh, system that I currently use has a extremely beautiful 200 to 600, um, and I, I love that lens very, very much. But this is supposed to be L glass amazing. One of the things that right away I noticed I had the 100 to 400 uh, back when I had the EOS R last year. It is the same size maybe it feels smaller I don't know it's tiny it's tiny 
like really tiny. Now, of course, it, it extends at trombones when you zoom, so it's not always going to be this tiny, but this is, holy moly, a small lens. And from what I understand, and I always, I had the, the old 400 f5.6, and I always thought this was the greatest lens color idea design. Never really cared for the 400, 100 to 400s design where you had to unscrew the foot. Um, but that is just, holy mackerel. This is 500 millimeters. So let's see. Yeah, I mean, it trombones a little bit. But it is not terrible. And, man, it's pretty light. It's really damn small. Holy crap. Um, without the foot on it, I mean, it's tiny. Uh, this is feels like a, maybe a plastic foot. I don't know if I love that. feels plasticky. Uh, the hood, you know, kind of the standard these days for the, the middle range L glass. Uh, it's just a plastic hood. Um, I'm going to swing around and grab my 200 to 600 for Sony. So this is normally what I'm shooting wildlife with. It's my 200 to 600, uh, which I, I really do love. And it's unfair because it has the hood on and all that. But So let's just even it up and put the hood on. Jeez. Well, that is... And I'll put the I'll put the collar back on just for the sake of, of size comparison and weight comparison and all that fun stuff. But uh, let's see here. Unscrew. Lift up. Clamp on. Yeah, one thing I don't love is it doesn't have any detents. These little markings are super tiny, hard to see on the on the lens body, but. Oh yeah, it's a it's a good bit lighter. Now it is a third of a stop darker and 100 millimeters shorter. <sighs> and that's stressing me out a lot because uh, if you shoot wildlife, you know that 600 millimeters is sort of the gold standard uh, for wildlife. And mm, I'm a little bit worried about cutting myself off from, from 600 to 500 and then also going a, stop down, a third of a stop darker. However, um, the one thing that I can say uh, is I know this lens is mega, mega sharp, like sharper than sharp. Um, so if I gain a little bit of sharpness over this lens, which is pretty sharp, but not, I'd say not, not Sony's best. Um, and I'm gaining a whole heck of a lot of resolution with the R5, uh, going from, uh, 24 megapixels to 46 megapixels. So there should be a lot more croppability in this 100 to 500, uh, which is really exciting. Um, and I, I, this is just, I can't even get over how small it is. Like, like I remember the 100 to 400 and it just, it felt bigger than this. And maybe it's just because I had to put the adapter on the 100 to 400 and all that, but um, it just felt larger than this. And that's gonna just stow really nicely in my camera bag. Um, I feel a little guilty because this is, and this is an amazing lens. And one thing I do love about this lens is the internal zoom. I just think that that is, Nobody else on the market's doing this with their wildlife lenses for zoom lenses, except for the very expensive 200 to 400s from Sony or from Canon and Nikon. Um, but I do love this lens, and this is probably the hardest part of leaving Sony is leaving this lens. Uh, so unless the, the 100 to 500 really shows, shows me some stuff, I'm going to be hard-pressed to walk away. But uh, that being said, uh, I am certainly willing to give it a try because that is just... You probably know I have a bad back, and this is just so small. It's just amazing. Other thing that's really cool about this, this thing is damn near a macro. I always love that about the 100 to 400. Uh, this is certainly not. This has got a much further focal distance uh, for minimum focus, uh, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, I'll be curious to see how the autofocus speeds compare between the two of these, the tracking compares, because obviously the most important thing is, can I track wildlife with this lens as well as I have with this lens? Does this lens autofocus fast or faster than this lens? And is it sharper? Because obviously that's super important too, especially with 46 megapixels. Uh, so with that, Fingers crossed. Um, this will be the last lens that I get today. Tomorrow, I'm very excited. Like, that's 
tomorrow is like the day. Uh, I got the very last, literally very last uh, 70-200 Canon L uh, that they had at Bedford's camera. They had to put my name on it special, and then there was a mix-up and big whole story, but I'm hoping that tomorrow my uh, my other my last piece of L glass for this order comes in the 7200 and I can really give it a good go and see if if this is really going to uh, replace my Canon and if not um, I'm not sure what to do because uh, right now the autofocus for the Sony is just not or for the video autofocus for the Sony is just not getting the job done for me. And guess what just arrived? Pretty excited about this. Big shout out to Bedford Camera. This is one of the absolute hardest things to find on the internet today. B&H doesn't have them. All these peanuts. Uh, Adorama doesn't have it. Amazon doesn't have it. And in fact, uh, none of the camera stores that I frequent had a single one and they were back ordered from what I could see for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. So I was pretty excited when late the other night, or no, midday the other day, I hopped on Bedford Camera, which is one of my very favorite retailers, and they had it in stock. So I called to make sure because sometimes websites lie. And they did have it in stock, but they had exactly one in stock. Not one per store, one for all of their stores. And so I was pretty excited to get the very last one of these, basically what seems like in the United States, at least this week. Um, nowhere else seemed to have it in stock. Uh, so anyway, now that I cleaned up all those peanuts, this is the awesome and super lightweight 7200 f2.8 RF. Whew, exciting. Little lens pouch. It's too bad they didn't give you a case like they do with the uh, with the 100 or 500. I did like that little semi-hard case, but I don't really use it because it's in a camera bag most of the time. But I've heard this thing was small. <laughs> But, but that is just a little ridiculous. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> all right. So, like I said, I've been to I, I, I've seen all the reviews, and obviously this thing is killer, sharp, and, and just awesome. But, you know, and they always mention about how tiny it is. But I think until you actually pick it up and hold it in your hand... <laughs> you don't realize <laughs> it's just hilarious. It's like they cut a camera lens in half. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, I, I, it's, it makes me a little giddy. The 70 to 200, uh, 70 to 200 is like the workhorse lens of any professional photographer. Uh, I'd say, uh, if I was drowning on a ship and I can only take a camera and one lens, it would probably be the 70 to 200. Uh, because, not that, why would you be saving a, a lens on a ship if you were drowning? But anyway, uh, this would be the lens for me for that. And I think probably most professional photographers would probably go along with that statement as well. Obviously, with the hood on, it's a little bigger. Um, again, one of the things I really love, and I hope Canon continues this, is they went with this awesome, easily removable uh, lens collar. I just think that that is, look at this thing. <laughs> I feel like this is like, a, you know, maybe just a little big for a kit lens, but like, it's just a little ridiculously small and even, even fully extended. It's about the size of what a 7200 looks like normally. Uh, but man, does that pack small? One of the things that I didn't like uh, when I switched back to full frame is that I couldn't carry just a simple backpack uh, with all my lenses on it anymore because, well, they're just big and kind of heavy and bulky. Uh, but with the RF, uh, with this lens, especially if, you know, you put the hood on backwards, um, <laughs> that packs into anybody's camera bag. 
Um, it's just, that is remarkable. In fact, I am so impressed because let me, let me go swing over here and grab, uh, this is my normal 70-200 2 2.8. This is the G Master lens. And let's see here. I already just compare apples to apples on this. Yeah, it it's a lot smaller. Now, again, if you were to extend it, it's actually taller than the G Master. But, you know, the G Master is fine when you're shooting. This is a fine size lens to be holding when you're shooting. It doesn't bother me at all. I mean, it's just totally fine. But when you're carrying it, when you're packing it into a camera bag, this is this takes up a substantial spa space in my camera bag, um, whereas this will not. And that is uh, just absolutely. Now, if they made it this size and it was internally zooming, Canon would be doing something that I would consider probably black magic. But but even, even externally zooming, uh, this is just remarkably small. And, you know, certainly a lot lighter. Now, I do have the... the uh, the spider holster foot on this one because this is basically how I carry my camera lenses when I'm shooting. Uh, but just overall, one of the things I'm so strike it's so striking when you compare the Canon RF series to the Sony is you can see the Sony lens mount was originally an APS-C lens mount. Uh, this this shrunken collar right here doesn't exist on any RF lenses. Um, you can just see that this was actually an originally an APS-C size mount. They managed to no problem fit a full frame sensor in it, but as far as uh, lens limitations, it is kind of a bummer uh, that they have to have these, these pretty uh, extreme reducers here. Uh, I, I don't know if it impacts image quality or not, but I definitely know uh, that every EF lens or every uh, Sony lens, sorry, every E-mount lens, full frame, FE, not EF, uh, lens has this this drop collar, whereas the Sony's just simply do not. It's just a basically a just a slightly smaller mount size. But it is it is pretty interesting to see. Now the one thing that I'm kind of disappointed about, and I'll go put my 7200 G Master back. The one thing I'm kind of disappointed about is that this can't take a 2x or a 1.4x teleconverter. Um, I don't do it all that often, but it was nice to be able to just carry a 1.4x teleconverter and get a 320 f/4. Uh, that being said, it's it's not a, it's not a deal breaker. You know, when I'm shooting the people that I'm generally photographing with those lens, families and stuff like that, uh, I'm not using it with a teleconverter, so uh, it's really not a big deal. Uh, but I can tell you that you know I will be probably shooting a whole heck of a lot with this collar off just handheld like this because man that is it's just so light i mean it's really lightweight even with the hood on it's so lightweight so uh, anyway that makes up the lenses that i have to play with and hopefully fall in love with um i do wish that canon had continued the tradition of putting the uh light flocking on the inside as opposed to the sort of ribbed plastic I, I felt like that felty kind of material that was in the 100 to 400 uh, maybe blocks stray light just a little better, but uh, this does fine. And uh, I do like that they have these sort of semi-rubberized ring around the outside. It's just a little bit nicer uh, and not a pedal hood because, uh, you know, you put your lens like this with a pedal hood and boop, it tips over real easy um, with the solid ring uh, round hood like that. Uh, it doesn't do that. So that is a really nice, uh, a nice to have. Uh, not a deal breaker again for other lenses, but a nice to have on this. And if you're spending as much as this costs, it's nice to have it. All right. Well, uh, next up, I'm going to be doing some some trial and errors and see uh, see if these lenses can compete. Mm -hmm.